Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, and thank you uh, especially to our guest speakers so today we have three very uh, distinguished guest speakers uh, Cik Azmil from uh, Lada uh, who is going to start off the session today uh, we know about Langkawi uh, the Geopark Langkawi which is the birthplace of South Asia a very interesting topic that we have today and we also having uh, two other guest speakers uh, one from uh, UMT, we'll talk about treasure hunting. So, Professor, uh, sorry, I don't get my slide. Uh, talking about uh, Langkawi, uh, sorry, talking about uh, treasure Hunters. Rizal. Professor Hazrizal, uh, we're talking about treasure hunters uh, in Langkawi, uh, in East Coast Malaysia. Uh, there's a shipwreck there, right, for kids who doesn't know. It's a very interesting topic, and we'll follow up with ISM Coral. Uh, from Zambia, we'll talk about ISM Coral and how the activities and how uh, we can help in terms of the conservation. And today also we are very fortunate actually, uh, we have uh, support from TPAS, right, which is the Library, which is uh, hosting uh, a ses this session uh, from the library itself. So we have parents and kids at the library that are uh, following this session live at the library. And after this event, eh, our speakers, the uh, Azmir and the Prof, after this event, the kids will have a small activity at the library based on your presentation. Okay, and uh, you know, the top 20 kids who, who finish the activity fast and correct uh, will win some prizes from TOEFL. Okay, so uh, without uh, you know, much uh, time wasting, so, so, I now hand over to Jasmine so that we can proceed straight, uh, with the session. Uh, all these, Jasmine. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Ezani and the audience. Uh, my name is Azmil Munif Muhammad Bukhari from uh, Tourism Division uh, LADA. LADA stands for Langkawi Development Authority. We are the, <clears throat> we are the agency who uh, actually uh, build up Langkawi. So my topic today is uh, Langkawi is the birthplace of Southeast Asia. I'm going to share with you guys um, what does it mean, the birthplace of Southeast Asia uh, in terms of uh, geology? Well, this is just to show uh, where we are, Langkawi. Uh, if, if the audience is from international, uh, they probably do not know where Langkawi. But uh, if you are Malaysian, you know where is Langkawi. So if you haven't been to Langkawi, please come. There's a lot of activities to be done in Langkawi. Right. So uh, some milestone over here. Um, <clears throat> Langkawi, uh, we started as a duty-free status. It was in 1987. That was the time where um, the Langkawi uh, looking forward towards uh, becoming a premier uh, tourism island in this region. And uh, in 1990, uh, our office, my office, Langkawi Development Authority, was established under Ministry of Finance to accelerate the development of Langkawi in terms of tourism. And in 2001, um, in the, um, within the local council, local uh, municipality, uh, we were um, given a status uh, as tourism city, like in Malacca. They are getting the heritage city status. Langkawi, we are getting tourism city status. And in 2007, uh, 15 years ago, this is the another achievement for Langkawi when we were recognized as UNESCO Global Geo Park. Um, this is also important uh, status for us to, to be recognized uh, globally. And then um, in 2015, um we were we were uh, <clears throat> getting the recognition as top 10 world island destination um among others uh, seashell maldives mauritius we were at number 9 at the time and then in 2021 when the tourism uh, when the covid hits uh, the world in 2020 
So we were the first destination in, in um, I would say, in this region to start this travel bubble to improve our economy at that time. And then it was a successful uh, bubble, tourism bubble, where we only allow uh, tourists from, from a, a green or a, a vaccinated uh, area to come to Langkawi. And then when this, when this um, uh, travel bubble happens uh, successfully, so the government decided to open Malaysia uh, <clears throat> uh, international border starting this 1st of April, this year, April. And then uh, in 2022, this year, we just caught the award of top five best island in Southeast Asia. So those recognition is very important for us to uh, to get more tourists uh, globally. Right, uh, let's take a look. Who is the architect of Langkawi? So surely is uh, Tun Dr. Mahadi Muhammad. He is actually a, a medical doctor when he finished his um, medical school in Singapore in 1955. So he was posted on the island to Langkawi as medical doctor. At that time, nobody wants to come to Langkawi because of the remote island. So you need, you need to take a boat uh, about three hours at that time from the mainland of Kedah just to come to Langkawi. So not many people around. <clears throat> and then um, he is actually, Tun Dr. Mahadi actually is the current member of parliament uh, for Langkawi. And since 1956, he has a vision to make Langkawi as one of the premier uh, tourist destination. And then when he, when he uh, became a prime minister, the fourth prime minister at that time, it was in 1983-84. So he's immediately uh, you know, put his vision into a reality. So that is where Langkawi become today. And of course, he served back as a seventh prime minister of Malaysia. And at that time, he is the oldest prime minister in the world. And the best part of, of him, of Tun, Tun Dr. Mahade and Tun Siti Hasma, they both of them still come to Langkawi on a monthly basis. They come every month. And when they come here, Tun Mahade will drive himself on the island. And normally they will stay at um, one of the one of the um hotels called the Dana, and then that hotel has a, a piano in the dining room. So Tun Siti Asma would, would play the piano every time after they had breakfast. So it's, it's amazing to see that such uh, such occasion uh, when whenever whenever I'll have an opportunity to join them for breakfast. So these are the tourist arrival to Langkawi since 1987. We start to collect data since then. There's a few occasion, um, a few occasion <coughs> uh, happens uh, that make Langkawi arrival up, ups and down a few times, especially during Asia economic crisis in 1997. Uh, if you guys remember, tsunami happens in 2004. I'm not sure whether students you are still were born yet, but uh, that was the time that. Um, you know, after that, uh, the island is quiet because of the the massive, the massiveness of tsunami. Um, after that, so tourist arrival dropped down a bit, and then uh, we get the status of Langkawi UNESCO Global Job Park. So the the arrival move up until two thousand nineteen. We get three point nine million tourists to Langkawi. And then it start to drop, it started to drop in 2020. This happened globally. And then it drops again in 2021. And then now 2022, when government started to open the border. So we've improved a lot, in fact. Right, um, <clears throat> this is actually uh, some facts of Langkawi. Uh, Langkawi actually is an archipelago of 99 islands altogether. Um, the land, the size of the land is 478 square kilometer. Actually, uh, we used to have the same size of Singapore uh, probably 20 years ago. 
but Singapore keep expanding until um, they are now at about 800 square kilometer. But if uh, Langkawi wanted to count the, the water body as well, take a look at the outer, the outer line here, that is where uh, border of Langkawi. If that include the size of Langkawi is 920 square kilometer. And 80% of uh, Langkawi still remain intact with permanent reserve forest and mangrove forest. So that is lucky for us. Lucky for many tourists that come here, they wanted to see a green destination rather than uh, main buildings. And then the highest elevation is 881 meter above sea level. That is the, the mountain in the middle of uh, the island here, Gunung Raya. So if you drive up to Gunung Raya here, it can be, can drive up or hike up or cycle up, up to this mountain, you could see a 360 view of Langkawi. And our population is just about, uh, uh, about a little less than uh, 100,000 in 2021. Of course, we also uh, have a multiracial society, same with other destination in Malaysia. Our daily temperature is 32 degrees Celsius. This, this one, I just want to say that our this Langkawi Island is, is all year round destination. Could come uh, at any time of the year, you could swim in the sea, you could do all the activities all year round because we don't have monsoon. Uh, we don't have um, a raging weather that you could not go anywhere. So that is good. And of course, our airport and international, our airport and jetty are international status. So you could arrive from, uh, from different part of the world uh, to Langkawi. And of course, it's a, we are duty-free island. It's very cheap to get uh, chocolates, um, uh, some uh, kitchenware uh, for parents, chocolates for kids, and um, other things like, like perfume, like cosmetics also. It's good price. And of course, we were uh, getting the Global Job Park status, the first in Saudi Asia in 2007. Right, next would be... All right, this is, uh, this is our journey, the Jopak journey. We got the status in 2007. And Jopak, uh, once we got the status, it's, it needs to be revalidated every four years. So we have gone through three uh, revalidation process. And the next one would be just next year, 2023. So we have ready for that. Hopefully, um, you see the, the job park, uh, it has like a traffic light system. If, if you get the red card, you cannot become a job park. If you get a yellow card, you're only allowed to continue about two years. And if you get the green card, you, you, are, you can continue the job park status for, for the next four years. So, uh, Alhamdulillah, for the past three uh, revalidation, we, we get, we got ourselves a green card. So hopefully for next, next years to come, we keep uh, getting the green card. Right, currently there are 177 UNESCO Global Job Parks in 46 countries altogether. If you take a look at this map, this global map, uh, on, on your left here, left here, um, uh, you see the concentration of Jopa mainly in China. So China uh, is using the Jopa model to eradicate uh, the poverty. And then whereas if you see here in, in Europe, uh, map on your right here, so mainly uh, this, this European nation, they are using Jopa status as as their uh, sustainability model, just to push their destination to become more sustainable. Okay. Right, um, let me uh, bring you uh, to be more international. So uh, UNESCO has uh, three science programs. Number one is World Heritage Site. What is World Heritage Site? There are two main elements over here conservation of natural and cultural site. And of course, it must, that destination must have outstanding value. So in Malaysia, there are four destinations that getting this World Heritage Site. One is the Mount Kinabalu, Seth, 
Mount Mulu, Pulau Pinang and Malacca, they're getting uh, the site because of the cultural. And of course, uh, <clears throat> the new on the list is Langong. Langong has uh, Perak men. They found Perak men about 11,000 um, year old uh, mummy. So that's why they're getting the wood heritage site. And the second UNESCO science program is man and biosphere. What is man and biosphere? It must have a biological importance of that place, plus the cultural diversity of the area. And then uh, in Malaysia, we have Tasik, Chini, and Crocker Range. Crocker Range is in Sabah. And the last one is Jopak. So what does Jopak mean? Jopak actually is, is an area of site of landscape with international geological significance. Um, the word of international geological significance is, is very important for you to become a Jopak. Without international geological significance, you cannot be a Jopak. So I will explain after this, what does it mean by international geological significance? And of course, it must be uh, managed with holistic concept of protection, education, and sustainable development. And at the moment, uh, in Malaysia, we only have Langkawi as the, as the UNESCO status uh, Jopak, and we actually were the first in Southeast Asia. Right, uh, <clears throat> this, um, when we talk about geopark, so it, it kind of uh, relate very much to geology. I just want to explain uh, a, a bit um, what, what, what does it mean by, by rock cycle. In this world, we only have three rock cycle that keep repeating themselves. Number one is the igneous rock. Igneous rock is, is actually uh, what we call lava. It comes from the 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 middle of the earth it comes out the rock comes out through lava and then when it when the rock comes out that rock called igneous rock when the rock comes out to the surface we call it as sedimentary rock sedimentary rock is um it, it being transferred by wind or by water by river by tectonic plate so those are the rocks on top of uh, of surface of the earth and then metamorphic rocks is um, the process of the, the lava to come out from the middle of the earth. So it has a process of uh, pressure and heat. So it becomes metamorphic rocks. Metamorphic rocks normally rocks with, with a uh, semi-precious or precious stone. That is where gold or marble or um, a jade is being formed. So in Langkawi, the best part of Lanka, we have these three type of rock cycle evidence in Langkawi. So that is one of the important things to become a Jopak. Okay. Next is, okay, take a look at this. Um, it's very uh, much related to our topic today as, uh, as the ocean warriors. Um, Langkawi was once uh, located next to Australia. You see one uh, about 225 million years ago, we only, we only have one land and one ocean, super ocean and super land. That super land called Pangea. And Langkawi is located way down south next to Australia. About 150 million years ago, the land, this land, uh, because of the tectonic plate has separated uh, between two a giant um, a land, which is uh, is already separated. The north land called Laurasia, the southern land called Gondwana. So Langkawi is part of Gondwana land. And um, about 100 million years ago, so we could see it has, uh, the, the tectonic plate has moved the, the earth to the current, uh, quite quite similar to the current um, continent that we have. So Langkawi at that time, still down there, and then because of the tectonic plate, uh, shifted Langkawi to where we are, very close to equator. So that is the, that is the reason why we become the birthplace of Southeast Asia. At that time, no countries 
has formed yet, except Langkawi. Right. Um, <clears throat> these are the international geological significance that I've told you. Um, you cannot get this, this uh, significance at other places. Number one is um, the oldest rock formation in Southeast Asia. Um, the mountain called Mount Machinchang, where the cable car is, the age of that mountain is 550 million years old. So if you go up to Cable Car, if you already gone up uh, during your last holidays, you actually step up at the oldest peak in Southeast Asia. That's number one. Number two is um, uh, the, the northwest, sorry, northeast of the island where we have a uh, unique tropical cast island formation, uh, cast island in the world. Take a look at the, the uh, cast, the word cast refer to the formation of limestone. And um, not many places in this world has this unique um, you know, shape of uh, tropical cast, only in Langkawi. And of course, uh, we also have the drop stone age, one billion year old. This dropstone is actually uh, is a glacier. It's dropped by glacier some uh, about 25,000 years ago during the last ice age. So it, it, it actually glacier from the mountain top. So it collect all the debris. So when it start to melt, then, uh, then it being uh, washed away to the shore. So this is where it dropped. So the, the age is 1 billion year old. And also in Lankari, you also found uh, the, the ancient current, the, sorry, the ancient sea level is at 23 meters higher than the current level. So not at only one spot, at I think more than um, 20 spots we found at the mountain top. So we could see, we could easily uh, identify the corals uh, being deposited at the, the, the cave. So proven that uh, at that time, uh, the sea level is, is higher than where we are right now. And the last one is the, uh, we could see the evidence of a meteorite impact crater that happens 10 million years ago. Uh, if we tourists climb up to Gunung Raya, that I'm, I've told you, the, the, the highest mountain just now, you could see very clearly without binoculars, you could see the crater um, uh, impacted from, from the meteorite 10 million, 10 million years ago. So these are the things where, where we get uh, the status, uh, the, the Joe Park status. Right, um, <clears throat> a bit more, this, this uh, geological time scale, just to, to show to, to you is um, our, our Langkawi is even older than the Jurassic Park at that time. So take a look at the okay the 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 Earth age is four point six billion years old, but um, Langkawi only uh, start to exist during this time five hundred forty two uh, million years ago during the Paleozoic. So during Paleozoic, we are actually. Um, yeah, Gunung Machinchang start to, to form during this time. Whereas uh, Jurassic or the dinosaur only appears in this earth about, about 200 million years ago. So this one just to prove that Nkawi is older than, than um, Jurassic era. Okay. Right, uh, because of that, this also very much related to our uh, topic today. Ocean warriors. This is actually our mascot. We call we call him as Obit. So what is Obit actually? Obit actually uh, derived from the name of trilobite. Trilobite is actually uh, the first complex animal ever exists in this world, and that animal, the fossil, the fossil still. Uh, intact in Langkawi. You can, you, if you come to Langkawi next time, I can probably bring you 
to see the fossil of, of this uh, animal. So these are <clears throat> these are shell animal. Why 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 we call trilobite? Because it has three lobes here. One, two, and three. You guys can see my cursor, right? Okay. And then um, so trilobite or shell animal uh, exists in this world 500 million years ago. And then in this world, there are more than 60,000 species of trilobites. And then trilobite only appeared at the beginning of Paleozoic area and extinct during at the end of Paleozoic area. Paleozoic area referring to the Earth age from 550 million years old to about 250 million years old. So this trilobite exists even before the dinosaur come to this world. And at the moment, only 20,000 trilobites species are recognized by scientists. The other uh, 40,000 is not recognized by scientists because the, 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 the fragment is too, um, the specimen is too fragmented. They cannot identify which, which is which. So we have taken this trilobite to become our mascot. This is what we explain to students every time uh, we go to school and talk to them. This trilobite is marine animal. Uh, they only live uh, underwater. And actually, they live about 300 million years uh, uh, at that time. And then, um, so whoever comes to Lankai, you can, you can go and see this fossil. All right, next slide. Okay, um, this is the map of Lankawi. If you can see this, we have allocated four at least four different uh, places in Langkawi to become conservation area. So this is where we uh, we bring uh, tourists to visit to this place. Yeah? Number one is the Machinchang Cambrian Joe Forest Park. Cambrian referring to the, to the age of the earth at that time. The age is 550 million years old. So um, this is the mountain that um, we built the cable car. You can ride up to this cable car. This cable car actually has um, has three world record. Number one is the steepest in the world at 42 degree. If you climb up from middle station to top station. And then uh, number two, this, this, you can see this, um, the right picture here, the uh, hanging bridge. This is the longest uh, suspension hanging bridge in the world uh, is actually uh, 125 meters uh, length and of course it stands at about 650 above 650 meter above sea level it's fantastic and the third the third world record is this cable that brings up all the gondola this cable um actually uh we also defeat the engineering the engineering from one Take a look at this, yeah. From one tower to another tower, the 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 length is about one kilometer. So it's also um one of the engineering records. Yeah. Next is next is okay. What is the difference between Mount Everest and Mount Machinchang? Let's take a look at it. Mount Everest is just 60 million years old, whereas Mount Machinchang is 550 million years old. So we are much older than Mount Everest. The current height of Mount Everest is 800, sorry, 8,848 meters. And then current height of Gunung Machinchang is about 708 meters only. Okay, but the best part is Gunung, uh, Mount Everest is actually located at subduction zone. It keep, you know, moving up every year. The increment is about two point four inches every year. So whoever try to climb the Mount Everest, you probably break the world record every year. Whereas the increment at uh, Gunung Machinchang is zero because it's already stable. Uh, it won't go up higher up anymore so it's remaining there okay next 
Right, this is the activity that you can do at uh, Machinchang, Cameron, Joe Forest Park. Uh, you can go up, ride cable car. We have also zip line, uh, Oriental Village for shopping, uh, visit to Seven Wells, Waterfall, Telaga Tujo, and you can hike up to the mount to the peak, and then do a bit of activities with uh, horses. And the Kilim Cast Joe Forest Park, the second conservation area, you can do. Um, this is also a very uh, important conservation area. You can see the mangrove here and some the rock, the cast formation. Very nice. So these are the activities that you can do over here. Cave exploration. Uh, these are the fossil tour. These two Masale came all the way from Europe just to see the fossil. So in the whole of Malaysia, so we are one of the places that you can see fossil. Uh, of trilobite and uh, of course visit some Bakau century and then do some eagle watching and fish farm and the third conservation area is diamonding marble Joe Forest Park marble refer to um, what I talked earlier is about metamorphic rock metamorphic rock is is a is a precious stone or semi-precious stone it's not available at at all places in this world only special location um, that um, like Langkawi, you see, this is this is the lake of pregnant maiden Tasik Dayang Bunting. Actually, this Tasik, it was a cave before. The roof of the cave collapsed, so it becomes the lake. So this is lake of fresh water, and this is sea water. Is only connected by a ten meter high of wall. So. But seawater never seep into to the to the freshwater lake, so tourists can enjoy so much. Right. Next would be oh, these are some activities that you can do at Diamond Marble Joe Forest Park. You can do island hopping, and then visit some cave, uh, go for fresh sea seafood. Okay. And the fourth one is Kubang Bada Bayu Geo Trail. Um, this one also very good uh, boat tour. Take a look at the photo on your right. This is the cave. Um, but actually, this cave you need to hike a bit, hike up a bit, about twenty meter. So this one proof uh, that uh, our sea level just just here because this 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 cave was formed by the heat of the wave that keep hitting this 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 wall and then it become like this so this this proof that these are the uh, sea level at that time about 7000 years ago right this one just just a run through beaches in langkawi uh, this is the most famous chenang beach that every tourist like to come here and enjoy themselves there's a lot of uh, restaurant and water sport activities that can be done over here. And Tanjung Ru Beach is a very nice beach. You can see photo on the left. This is actually the sand bank. If you can zoom it, there are people walking, walk, uh, walking along this, this sand bank. This sand bank happens uh, every day. You can actually walk. And then when this, when uh, water recede, uh, this this uh, marine animal trap uh, along the sand bank you could see yourself. These are different animals from from you whenever you snorkel or dive. It's totally different animal you could see here. And Pantai Kok is uh, at the other part of the island. It's very nice. It has also marina here attached to it, and of course a hotel. Datai Bay uh, is at the end. It's northwest of uh, Langkawi. It's also a very good beach. It's two kilometers long. You can enjoy yourself. Tankora Beach, um, uh, very close to the Datai. It has white sandy beaches. And this rock also has many fossils uh, laying down. And then uh, we have uh, a man-made island, what we call 101 Paradise. So these are the man-made island where a lot of water sport activities being done over here. And this is a famous black sand beach, Pantai Pasir Hitam. Uh, you see, these this are very famous of, uh, you know, the mineral content of black sand beach is two. Number one is uh, tumalin, 
and number two is alumin alminate. These two mineral mix up that make uh, the sand to become black. What is important that I wanted, I wanted to tell you, uh, tumalin is where we do our ring, our ring. This is black uh, tumalin. And then ilminate is another mineral content. It so happened that alminate also found on the moon. So literally, if you step your foot into this black sand beach, literally you step on the moon as well. So next time your visit to Langkawi, please come and go to this black sand beach. Next is Marine Park. Of course, we are very close to Pulau Paya Marine Park. It's about 45 minutes um, by boat. You can do snorkeling and diving. It's very good. This, this is the only marine park on the west coast of Malaysia. And then, of course, uh, Sunset Cruise is very famous in Langkawi. You could see um, a dolphin would be following you, you know, very close, uh, you know, escorting you as, as, as you sun sunset cruising along the, the island. And of course, also we happens to receive whales as well recently. So if you're lucky enough, you could see these two uh, marine animals. Yeah. And that's about it. Thank you so much. Ezani, back to you. All right, thank you, Jasmine. Very interesting uh, presentation. All right. I think, you know, I was in Langkawi last month, actually. All right, and I enjoyed the uh, sunset cruise and very, uh, very true. Okay, uh, very true that uh, uh, dolphins were escorting us. And we also had uh, rainbows, all right, uh, you know, uh, next to the boat. Then it was a very surreal uh, experience. All right, uh, next trip, maybe I'll try the Black Sand uh, Beach as well. Okay. And we also had the opportunity to go up the uh, the cable car, all right, a magnificent view. I know you see the, the, the jagged uh, rock formations along the way, you know, spectacular. All right, spectacular. Good job, uh, Geo Park, you know, maintaining uh, the, the environment and maintaining the, the atmosphere and the activities in Langkawi. Uh, we hope, you know, the conservation efforts, you know, uh, you know, these are things that we have to preserve and at the same time, we add value. So not just you know, preservation that doesn't get anything, but preservation actually brings tourist uh, dollars and brings, you know, a lot more activities, you know, that we have to think outside the box and that will create the activities, you know, for the communities like. Okay, thank you so much, Yasmiel. All right, and kids, I hope you had a very good session all right, from first part of our speaker today. All right, now we move to the second session. Is our uh, professor uh, ready? Uh, our Indiana Jones professor, Treasure Hunter. Okay, okay, I'm ready. Okay. Okay, you can hear me? Yeah. Yes, you can hear can. me? You can hear me? All right, Prof. Okay. Yes, you can. Okay, all right, clear. I hand over to you, Prof. All right, uh, okay, and I'm sure the kids are excited to, to hear yeah. about your treasure hunting exercise. In, uh, no treasure hunting. Okay, 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 okay. I will try my. Okay, I will share my my slide. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Izani, and uh, my fellow uh, panel today, and also uh, all of the participants. Okay, uh, just to share with you about uh, the sunken and ship treasures of the East Coast Peninsula of Malaysia. And uh, my name is Hasriza Sha'ari, and I hope that uh, I can uh, share with you uh, the knowledge about uh, underwater. Uh, and also we call it uh, underwater cultural heritage. And for introduction, uh, okay. Actually, uh, this discipline, so underwater archaeology, is a new discipline in this region compared to the Europe country and also China. They are quite advanced in this uh, underwater ecology. And so for us in Malaysia, we start from uh, 1980s and 1990s with the development of maritime ecology in Malaysia is, uh, during that time is uh, well developed. But uh, unlucky during that time, we more involved with the uh, uh, foreign uh, scientists and foreign consultants compared to uh, the Malaysian uh, expert. <coughs> and then the, 
That's why in this journey to establish or to uh, to introduce the underwater technologies to public to try to establish the underwater technology center in Germany and the especially. Okay. Okay. What is the uh, about this field about? First is combination from the literature, or we can say the social science, and the second is applied science. Uh, third one is the technology and innovation force. What you call the uh, literature or social science? Okay, uh, during our, our uh, secondary school, maybe all of us uh, for uh, uh, who, who are about thirties uh, or forties now, we know about uh, the history, right? And uh, the history is uh, more related to the uh, archaeology because uh, archaeology is study about the past and uh, to know about the past you need to know about the history okay and the second one is a plot sign okay plot sign is a new field actually uh, the uh, what you the involve of uh, archaeology we try to understand about uh, uh, any related issue to the archaeological archaeology okay uh, for this one, like uh, we want to know the age of uh, any artifacts from the archaeological site, we should use the black sign. Uh, like uh, we want to know the age of uh, artifact, we use the carbon fourteen uh, to know the age, or we can use the the heating process of the artifact, so we can know the age or another. Uh, Aspect is uh, based on the literature of the script. Okay? And then technology and innovation about the, how we use the technology. For nowadays, uh, people use a ROV and a seabed crawler to go for the deeper area in the uh, any agricultural site. Okay, if you look at here, you look at here, is the, this map show Actually, uh, the excavated area of the shipwreck in the Southeast Asia. Based on this map, we can distinguish in the East Coast Peninsula in Malaysia, uh, nearly 10 uh, shipwreck was discovered, from, uh, which is close to the Trangana waters until the Chukar waters. You can see from here, uh, at the top of uh, uh, Tunggano, just off of Tunggano, uh, Sinta is one of the uh, famous also uh, for the uh, shipwreck in the South Asia. Uh, down to the uh, Joho, Turiang, and Tenangyang. So we can imagine, based on the uh, data from the uh, Department of National Heritage, they say that sir, in our terms, more than Hundred shipwreck. So you can imagine it's very, very uh, uh, like many shipwreck in the uh, our 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 waters. Okay. Okay, and we go about to be more focused in Peninsula Malaysia. So we can uh, I just uh, classify here from one, two, three uh, until from the Sinta to Duria. Three is located in Tengganu waters, and uh, we can imagine in this area is very um, uh, important uh, trading route in the past because they use actually the seal from uh, China to Thailand during that time. It's uh, whether either the Sukhothai or Ayutthaya down to the uh, of course, they will stop at the Masri and also uh, Malacca uh, during the science of Malacca Spinner. And what I want to talk more about uh, this underwater ecology for today is about the video shipwreck. Okay? Okay, initial phase of, of the journey. And uh, what we are thinking this is more important and this uh, more uh, meaningful for us because the discovery of a bidon shirak 
we use about 100%. Uh, we use 100% of the log files, but join excavation between UMT, University of Malaysia Terengganu, uh, Uzma Archaeological Research Center, uh, and also Department of uh, National Heritage. Okay. Okay, these are maybe people want to know where is the location actually? The Bidun Shirak. Okay. The location is Bidun Shirak is just about uh, 2.5 uh, kilometers from uh, uh, Bidun Island towards uh, the island. So, and then this area is gathered under the National Heritage Zone 2005. And uh, because uh, when it's gathered under National Heritage uh, Act, this area is specified to protected area. And uh, any uh, activities, basically, any activities that you want to hold in this area is the uh, should have the permission from the Department of National Heritage. Okay. Okay. And uh, the initial start of the this journey start from actually from uh, 2012. Normally in Malaysia, uh, how we found the artifact is based on accidentally uh, uh, by fishing gear or something like that. Yeah. Because it, based on the, uh, the uh, fisheries or fishermen uh, information, you know this area is uh, uh, one of the place that's uh, uh, for the uh, shipwreck. Okay, like the bidon shipwreck, you can see that's very, very actually for the first time when I dive in this uh, area, I feel like very excited. Yes, yes, uh, on the seabed there are many. Uh, artifacts that's uh, located on the city. And uh, we plan, so after that, so this is the name of a fisherman that found the artifact, uh, they found the, so they found the artifacts, uh, Mr. Radari bin uh, Anjang uh, at the, this area. And then so he reported to the uh, uh, site officer in uh, UMT. And then after that, so we make the follow up. Uh, to the authority sector. For forests, of course, we should uh, refer to our uh, university management and we also reported to the uh, Trengganu State Museum Board and also National Heritage Department. And then after that, we go for the uh, survey activities at the study area and uh, we go deeply and to look at first uh, during the survey, we want to know the bathymetry of this area, how large the coverage area for uh, the Bidon uh, Shipwreck. And the interesting part is uh, we found that uh, this area is not only, uh, the artifact is not only on the surface of the seabed, but it go down until eight meters from the surface of the seabed. You can imagine uh, how that's a ship and how many artifacts that's uh, brought by that ship uh, in the past. Okay, we can consider this one is a, 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 a trading ship. Okay, and uh, we gather the steam uh, among, uh, among the three, three uh, parties from the Jabatan Warisan, Jabatan Warisan, the MP, and also uh, Uzma Archaeological Research. And then, so we plan how we want to uh, excavate uh, in that, uh, the artifact from the, in this area. And then, so we go for the proper scientific excavation. Because in the past, back to the 1980s and 1990s, during that time, the excavation, we did not see the excavation, it's more to salvation because of the, we didn't do the proper scientific excavation like us in. A case of a video show that we uh, lay down the data line and then so we uh, measure the, the, the area and then we tag the, uh, the artifacts from the initial uh, process until the, the catalog and then so we store the, the, the artifacts. Okay, this is the process, and uh, of course, first uh, we see that's very hard part to 
to uh, to do the proper scientific excavation from the foundation because we need to record from the early process until the final catalogy and also the story of the uh, artifacts. So here, uh, we just allow the uh, professional uh, divers to conduct the scientific excavation because of uh, it's not uh, even uh, I, I forgot to talk about uh, this uh, type of the area. Okay, actually, compared to the others. Uh, uh, excavation site like uh, I just uh, said from Sintai, Longkwai, Antil Swande, and so on. This site is very unique because uh, the depth is about 18 to 20 meters, which allows uh, for the recreational diver to go in to go into the site compared to the, the other site. Uh, the other side is more than 50 meters, which is not allowed for the reflectional diver to go down under and to look at the artifacts. Okay, this is very unique this area. That's why we plan uh, to establish this area as one of the training center in Malaysia. The first Malaysia. Okay, and uh, this is about the uh, artifact measuring. That's why I told you that's uh, all the measurement of the artifacts. And cataloging of the artifacts, we should uh, uh, tag the artifacts from the below the sea, and then we bring up to the surface, transfer back to the uh, island, and catalog, measuring and catalog, and we take a photo of the artifacts. Okay, these are uh, several artifacts that we catalog. So actually, this one is belong to the uh, uh, Sukota uh, type of uh, artifacts. Yeah, there are normally there are two types of uh, certain line or certain array, and also the uh, type of uh, artifacts. So if we can say that it belong to the Thai kingdom in the previous uh, era. Okay, and then so I actually I try to relate uh, the importance of shipwreck when we discuss this uh, 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 previously. Uh, as much as uh, what I try to relate to the importance of the artifact with the, uh, uh, the environment. Okay, actually, uh, the importance of the shrek is like a time capsule, and of course, they, uh, they will have the historical values. And uh, third one is the marine productivity, and the fourth one is the income generation. Okay, uh, why? Forest, uh, marine ecologists and also archaeologists will say that the artifact is a shipwreck is a time castle because there are a lot of information they are keep in the, uh, the shipwreck. Uh, what uh, we want to know, like uh, how the ship sunk in the past, from where the ship uh, come from, and where is the, the, the ship is heading for? And then, so what the artifacts uh, bring together in the, the, the ship? Or what kind of artifacts that bring on the ship? So, there's many uh, questions, many uh, hypotheses that uh, will come from the, uh, from the uh, ship. Back. Okay. Okay, this one, maybe uh, not all of the Ship actually uh, bring uh, high value item. These are several uh, item that's uh, bring that brought by the uh, sunken ship or we call the ship in the past. Okay, at the left, left hand side, you can see that the upper one is a. Uh, this is normally belong to the time uh, in the or time uh, artifacts, uh, which is uh, you can say that is. Uh, less valuable compared to the below, left below, and the center one. This one is a very high valuable, uh, this is a high value uh, artifact uh, belong to uh, the, the porcelain. Actually, uh, the, the, uh, we can say that so for the ceramic, there's three categories. Uh, first one is uh, 
earthenware or in Malay we call it a uh, tebika tanah liat. Uh, second one is the uh, stoneware or in Malay we call it a uh, tebika batu. And the third one is the porcelain. porcelain. The porcelain. Okay. This one is a Ming porcelain. Ming porcelain is uh, normally in white and blue porcelain. And it's very uh, it's high value in the price or market value. Okay. Uh, but uh, compared to the uh, stoneware from the Thai kingdom or uh, from Sawangkalo or Sisakan Lai, this one is a uh, highest value compared to the Thai kingdom. Okay. And uh, the other part, what in terms of value item to the country. And second one, we can know the trading goods. Uh, we know that uh, during the past, we are uh, for uh, for the Malacca and the Masjid during that time is very active. That's why normally uh, these two places uh, function as the uh, stock center for the trading activity. Or in the past, we call it Interport. Export and import activity well, uh, have been held whole in this area. And uh, based on the artifact, we all can also distinguish the empire, dynasty, or kingdom. Okay. Okay. And the uh, uh, third one is a uh, marine productivity. Okay. And, uh, and that's a uh, if there's a you have the voices. Uh, what uh, contribute to the establishment of uh, oasis in the desert? Of course, water. Water is uh, very important, or the available uh, sources that uh, can uh, uh, spark the, the trigger to the development of oasis. Okay, when we go for uh, ocean or bottom water, normally of seabed. Coral reef is one of the important uh, factor that can uh, attribute to the uh, high productivity in the ocean. So, of course, to relate with the this topic, shipwreck is like your artificial reef. And when uh, it's, kind, uh, it's like your artificial reef, it also will provide the place for any uh, marine organism to live in this area or to attract more like a, a small fishes to come to this area and then uh, when the small fishes come to this area it will attract big fish to come and uh, it will be, uh, be part of the uh, city town for the uh, fish area. Okay? And then of course, is a uh, at Bidong. You can see there's a lot of uh, uh, fishes, coral fishes, or this one is uh, like chicken, uh, because it's a mempunyai nilai pasar, it's a marketable uh, fishes. And this one you can see that's uh, where the artifacts reveal on, uh, on the uh, seafloor to attract uh, like bed. Uh, that's the uh, artifact because it's weird like the substrate. And of course, uh, coral also can come, like the Javadite coral can come attached to the substrate of uh, artifact and they will grow. Because this area, I told you before, there's a, the water depth is not uh, very deep and then uh, you still receive the uh, sunlight to, uh, for uh, coral to undergo the photosynthesis process. And last one, the income generation. Yes, I stated here this is uh, spot fishing and scuba diving. Now, for of course, for the spot fishing, uh, uh, boat that's uh, bring this uh, jigger, we call it the uh, jigging uh, spot fishing, they will try to find the artificial reef or the place that is the uh, or uh, the, the, the artificial reef or uh, 
the sun page sheet. They will, they, they, they will think that uh, this area, there's a lot of uh, marketable uh, fish uh, in this area. So that's why they, they will uh, go for the uh, 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 sun page sheet of sheet right? And this is actually our excavation team in 2017. You can imagine the process from the uh, excavation, uplifting the uplifting the, the artifacts, and then say, cataloging and registering the artifacts. It will take more manpower to, to handle the, the facts. Okay. And so, next step for us, we try to establish the first underwater archaeology treatment center. And this one is uh, based on the uh, recommendation by uh, uh, Ministry of uh, Tourism uh, in 2019. That's that uh, we should uh, establish a uh, training center in uh, Malaysia for underwater uh, uh, study, I study. So, that's why we think that GNT is a half capable to develop this training center because we have the uh, facility, professional scuba diver, and uh, strategic partnership with the others, and then the port ambassador. We have, so that's why we think that so we have capable to establish this uh, training center in the GNT. And these are our facilities uh, in GNT. We have a uh, uh, station in the Bido Island, and we have diving center in the main campus. And uh, in terms of gear and instrument, also we have the uh, thing that so we can cater for the uh, process. And this uh, the science pool in the main the campus for the artifacts like uh, stoneware or earthenware. There is a porosity. What's mean porosity? Uh, so this means you can absorb the seawater to, to enter any the porous uh, or the structure of the artifacts. So that's why uh, in this case, any artifact excludes for uh, porcelain, we should go for desalination process. Desalination process means that we should remove all of the uh, salt that's uh, in the artifacts, like uh, this one, the stoneware. We should go for the desalination process. Maybe it's not a short term process. In the Thailand, it will take about uh, uh, six years to remove all of the salt from the artifacts. Okay. And this is our facility for the store storage room of the artifacts and gallery and we have a professional school divers food and vessel and this conclusion i think that's uh there are more underwater treasures or she rats underwater cultural heritage in Malaysia to be discovered and for us in the umt we looking forward to have uh, more people to involve with the excavation process and we also try to educate people how important the uh, artifact or underwater cultural heritage to uh, people out there. And uh, we try to emphasize of the, uh, give a uh, knowledge transfer to the others uh, divers that's better for them for, to be involved with the uh, shipwreck dive. They should uh, be more uh, concerned about the surrounding and not take any artifact on the, uh, the artificial side and uh, I think this all uh, and we try to uh, try to promote uh, or try to change the uh, theme of uh, diving from dive for fun to dive for knowledge and dive for education of course try to look at people how important the underwater uh, connection or artifact to the uh, people out there. So I think that's all from me. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you so much, uh, Doctor. Uh, very exciting uh, session, right? especially the last slide, Dive for Education. I think that's yeah. most important. Uh, yeah. That's what we're doing today, actually. Right, it's to give kids the knowledge, you know, and what they can see yeah. under yeah. the water. All right, and especially, you know, now we know there's shipwrecks in, in uh, Malaysia. Right, yeah. something that, you know, is, is good knowledge and new knowledge for all of us. Yeah. All right, uh, thank you so much for the session. I believe these are some good key points that the kids will use in their yeah. essay, in their newspaper uh, article, uh, write up, as well as their animation. Right. Okay. Great ideas, uh, great presentation. Thank you so much. And all the best for your excavation site at uh, Pulau Bidong. Hopefully, okay, we can visit you, you there one okay. fine day. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, now, we move to our uh, final speaker, Puan uh, Jamharia from Coral, the yes, Coral Malaysia. I believe uh, she will carry on the good work, uh, the presentation by doctor. And now, we look forward to, to hear from Puan. All to you. All over to you, Puan. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, I'm John Harry Jasper. Call me Sajam or Auntie Jam. Uh, okay, I'm not doing any presentation because I'm using only phone. So I'm, go, I'm going to do a story telling. Uh, I'm a journalist by, by profession uh, for 25 years. So as a journalist, I write a lot of things, especially on, on business of travel. I was in policy making with some of the ministers also because I'm a political writer. So one of the items I write uh, at that time, during only writing, not doing anything at, uh, from 1990 uh, to 2012, uh, I only write about climate change, I only write about, about uh, the image of uh, calorie, the image of uh, seas, and a uh, lot of the image items. So uh, my dream is to have uh, a place where I can build a new uh, island or new new area for, for tourism content, especially for scuba divers. So we start this NGO for uh, Forum Lake Education in 2013 with a marine park uh, in Lalu. Then we go from there, uh, we, we help a few of islands like uh, Redang, Perintian. Um, but it seems when we try to help the human beings, the human beings doesn't want to help themselves. They keep on throwing rubbish into the water, over development, uh, power babies, and uh, everything. So we find a solution when we met the dog in 2006. 2006. When I reached the dog uh, here, that I'm here in the dog now, it was so serene. There's nothing there. There's no human being at one one space to guard on uh, in the MC uh, area. And when I died in uh, in the dome, uh, um, floor, uh, for open floor, uh, it was so, so beautiful because the ship rock is everywhere. Vietnamese area, the ship rock is everywhere. So it's kind of like treasure hunt for me. It, it becomes sort of like a kazana for us, too, for divers. So I went, I went for uh, Operation UMC in 2006. We did a lot of UMC in the city of Sinaru, and they can have a result of them. So we'll build uh, Malaysia and the Box Gallery because I received a, a grant from uh, Tourism Malaysia uh, and two other politicians and also to manage uh, the Malaysian government at the time. So we, we did a lot of action. We, so we, we spent more than $1 million just to, to take something for divers inside the water. Talking about writing, uh, because everybody is now writing. So, uh, when you talk about writing, it's everything you're talking about damage, uh, following damage, why? Because it's over development. We're talking about 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 uh, about human beings, human human beings, uh, rubbish everywhere, plastic everywhere. We're talking about and 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 a steering committee talking about about damage, and when we try to solve the issues, when we go for one island, we have one party to solve the issues. We have fifty agencies 
again to issue because they have other 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 obligations. So my idea is to to break that to break away from that and create my own project project. And so we, when you find the dog, you can you can do something and to, to save one at least one item for the future generation. This, this is why one one of the reasons why I'm here. So uh, why corals? Corals is like I I lost my job in 2018 uh, uh, because I am an officer to the Malaysia Police and it's a Malaysia town at uh, at that time was a uh, minister uh, on the ground uh, as a deputy minister. So he proposed he proposed us to uh, take care of uh, uh, corals. So we would uh, the department of the people all the documentation and he did it all because coral is under under safety item and protection that we cannot that we cannot just take and 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 and, and just leave or take and uh and, and take it home. You have to have a special approval and directly from Jabatan uh become more and now also from Kikuba. So when we have all the documentation, so we we learn as they learn, they teach us how to pay together with MC. Uh then but then after one year with the MC we find out that we cannot go on because uh, the way the method is not right. So we went to Indonesia and we, we learned from Indonesia because Indonesia is uh, the biggest export in the world, 90% of the world marine content for export is coming from Indonesia. So we, we learned, we only learned about Acropora, and this is Acropora. Acropora meaning that whoever at the sea, you can see this Acropora, it's a lot of families, uh, just, just in front of your beach. So it's not a problem to find this. So when we learn this, uh, so it's in 2018, my office turned from uh, office work and generally uh, writers uh, to become uh, my office now at the ocean floor. So I work with the fish, I work with the water, and I work with the colors now. Uh, we try to find colors. You know, when we find colors, what we're going to do is to do the colors. So uh, it's like that, and it's any, like any other ordinary farm. What we do is we just cut a little bit of the plant and we, we, we then we put on the base and we put like this. This is gum, this is this, this is the gum, and this, uh, this one is the cut. This one you might see here, this one died already. Because one of one is what is really, it's, it's not, so they don't have any, any more uh, life left. So this is what we do, and then we put, and we put like this, and we put back into the water on the, on the floor. There's a table in the water, in the uh, industry. So that's what we do. Uh, so actually, uh, as a writer, I I can only write. I cannot do anything. Uh, so I now becoming a very active uh, uh, activist to say that you have to do something to the water. When the when the uh, seminar to be ocean warrior, the first of the kids, the kids and the students about this. Ocean warriors, we cannot only speak and write. We have to do this uh, uh, action. Uh, so, I, what we do is that well, how can we do programs? How can we do things to, to not only for us, it can be like a shipwreck in the community because the divers now becoming, we have too many divers now. In 2019, we have more than 1 million divers in, 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 uh, around the world, and we should actually more or less we have. More and more divers that we go because it becomes cheaper and cheaper. Divers also become more of a problem for the followers because they keep on to their own everything. Uh, so, this is actually the education part is important for us. So, for Forum Malaysia, one, one of our students is education. We are working with the university uh, students, uh, schools, and everything. We now also have a project with the social media for the Taliban project. And we will go to the talk about police division. We talk about how to take care of our our schools. We will go to the desk for our help. They need our help very, very badly. The risk is very, very bad. How can we help them? If we don't help them, so we just don't see the image to become easier and easier every day. So, uh, so as a writer, now I start, I start talking a lot, asking people. Uh, so, uh, so I, I asked all 
to warrior siya. I mean, just to go to him. If you want to become a warrior, stop making stop making stop making mistakes and stop doing things properly. And write some things for me. So, the Indonesian is a book like Island. Now I'm on an island. I'm on an island. I don't have any people around me. Uh, like, yeah, it's just for me. So, uh, it's beautiful. And we have to keep the things uh, that. And we have to improve the things that. So, uh, for sure, you can ask me anything about how, how working the things that on the, on the ocean floor. And working with the fish, working with the water. And working with the water. Environment, so you have to see uh, all the uh, everything. So, uh, ask me questions and I will, I will answer it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. It's a very interesting uh, session. Indeed. All right. Uh, maybe we can uh, open the floor for some of the kids to ask uh, uh, what some questions you may have. All right. Are you open for questions? I think it looks like there's no, no questions for the kids. Anybody from the PPS? Uh, kids from the PPS? Any questions from the uh, stage area? Assalamualaikum. I think we have a very good session uh, today. We have a lot of content to be uh, for, for, for I, that can be used as ideas to write uh, by all the, the, the potential participants for this program. I think uh, very, very, very good session from the historical, from Blankawi and, and, and uh, the, the, the artifacts discovered by UMT, there's a lot of things uh, that can be used uh, to make a storyline more interesting this year. I think if there's no, no questions, like I, I agree with Tati I think everybody's had a very good uh, input, right? They have a lot of contents, they have a lot of ideas now. Uh, a lot of uh, interesting things that they've never seen or heard before, All right? So we look forward to see uh, you know those write-ups, you know, and maybe you know we can we can get uh, some uh, free um, you know geopark or uh, cable car rides for some of the winners, maybe some free trips to the archaeological sites of Plobidong that we can you know provide them for the winners of the you know, best uh, 100 essays to come. Uh, Inshallah, we will work on that. Eh? So, uh, thank you so much, Jasmine. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Hazina. Thank you so much, uh, Juan. 
All right, uh, Jamuria, uh, for your time and for your session and for your input. Uh, we look forward to to read some very interesting write-ups uh, from the kids. And I'm sure, you know, uh, Cik Azmir, Dr. Hasrizal and Puan Jamuria are also uh, looking forward to read, you know, these inputs from the kids. Yeah? All right, thank you so much, everybody. Any last, last words from our speakers? All right, okay, thank you so much. I wish you all the best and a very productive uh, a week ahead. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much, Tuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Thank you.